So in my last video, my previous video, I talked about how Yeshua, Yehoshua, the Messiah, is going to come and fight against many of the churches. He says so. The words came out of his mouth. Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. Uh, it would be highly advisable if you have not listened to that video to go to it now before you start on this one. Now, um, you have also seen me over and over again mention Haggai 2 verses 18 through 22, how on a specific day, Jehovah is going to bless Israel again, but also on that specific day, he's going to overthrow the thrones of kingdoms by brother against brother. Now, I want to read something from isracast.com uh, and it's concerning the timeline. It, it is the same timeline that is written in Haggai 2 verses 18 through 22. What timeline is that? That timeline is the 24th day of the ninth month or the 24th day of the month of Kislev on the Hebrew calendar. That particular day is the first day of Hanukkah. Okay? Jehovah said that is the day he is going to begin to bless Israel again. That is also the day, not necessarily the date, but the day that Jehovah is going to overthrow the nations, which means... Israel is going to be on top, and the nations are going to be on the bottom. When I say nations, I mean the Gentile nations. Now, so this article on Israelcast, uh, it is December 1917, General Allenby enters Jerusalem. I will start with the very first sentence of the article. On the first day of the Jewish Feast of Hanukkah, in December 1917, the Battle of Jerusalem resulted in the city of Jerusalem falling to the British forces led by General Allenby after 400 years under Turkish rule. Now, did Jerusalem fall into the hands of the Jews? No, but a promise was made. A promise was made. The promise called the Balfour, Balfour Declaration was made merely days before. November the 2nd, 1917. Promise was made that Palestine, as the Romans called it, Palestine, would become the homeland for the Jews. The Balfour Declaration It was a public statement issued by the British government during World War I announcing support for an establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. Then an Ottoman region with a minority Jewish population, it read, His Majesty's government view with favor 
the establishment in Palestine for a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done that may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights of political status enjoyed by the Jews in any other country. In other words, the non-Jews would be still allowed to practice their religion freely, and the Jews in the other countries would not be forced to go back home, but they were given. This is your home. That was the promise. <laughs> Palestine would be the homeland for the Jews. <clears throat> Period. Now think about it for a minute. Okay? This was 1917. That promise was broken, folks. The promise, that promise was broken by Europe in the 30s and the 40s. The British made this promise, and it was a promise, in all truth, it was a promise to Jehovah, the Holy One of Israel. And so, as it was apparent, Jehovah gave then the British the authority to, ca to carry out this promise. Now, my dad told me that um, the con there was a, there was a conflict between the British and the Jews while the British were to carry out this promise, and it resulted in the gallows being used day and night against the Jews. Then, you see, 1922, the nations changed their promise. And then again, they changed their promise. Uh, I can't remember the dates anymore, but over and over, taking the land, more and more land away from Israel. So it's obvious when you read this Israel cast article that when the British promised to make Palestine a homeland for the Jews, Jehovah took them for their word, gave them the battle against the Turks so that they could carry out their promise. Proof, proof of that is that it was given to the British. Jerusalem was given to the British on the first day of Hanukkah. At that particular point in time, they were duty bound, duty bound to carry out their promise to give all of Jerusalem back to the Jews and to make the Holy Land, Palestine, the homeland for the Jews. But they didn't do it. Here we are. 
100 years later. Everybody is talking about war. We are extremely close to Hanukkah. Once again, 100 years later, one generation later. Now, I know people are going to say, no, Henry, one generation, 70 years. No, that's not true. One gener uh, 70 years is a lifespan of a man. Jehovah in Genesis described what a generation was. He said that he told Abraham that Israel would be slaves for four generations. They were for over 400 years. 100 years is a generation. So, here we are a generation later, and the world rejected the promise that was made. You see, <clears throat> let me refine what I'm saying here. Jerusalem was taken from the Muslims and given to the Christians so they could carry out their promise that was made to the Jews before the Holy One of Israel. Now, I will continue reading. Allenby was an accomplished horseman, and it would have made sense for him to ride triumphantly into the city. However, on December the 11th, Allenby entered on foot out of his great respect for the holy city. Now, General Allenby, he knew. He knew what he was doing. He knew the significance of the holy city of Jerusalem. becoming the first Christian to control the city in centuries. Allenby placed the city under martial law and posted guards at several points within the city and in Bethlehem to protect sites held by Christian, Muslim, and Jewish religions. This victory was the end of the Ottoman Empire's rule over Jerusalem, which lasted 400 years. It took one day. One day, the day of the attack on Jerusalem was fixed as December the 8th. And it fell to the British Christians the very next day. On the first day of Hanukkah, on the 24th day of the ninth month, as described and prescribed in Haggai 2, verses 18 through 22. Take a look around you. It looks like nuclear war might break out. There is, talk, there is talk of nuclear war. I don't need to go into detail. You know what it's all about. You know what's going on. I'm telling you to watch the 24th day of the ninth month. The 24th day of the month of Kislev. I'm telling you to watch the first day of of Hanukkah, 100 years after the broken promise of the first day of Hanukkah, or of um, the Balfour Declaration,
and handing over the city to the Christians to carry out that promise that they made. Um, so if you think that the 24th day of the ninth month of Haggai 2 had no meaning after Messiah's death. Well, clearly, what happened on December 9, 1917 will prove you wrong. I believe we need to really, really pay special and close attention to this one. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. You see, dates that were written in the prophets do matter. Because it doesn't matter what anybody tells you, it does matter. 